Hello everyone, my name is Scott Turnbull. I'm with US Ignite. We have a few of our partners and have been working with the HoloLens here local for local development for trying it out. We think that augmented reality and virtual reality holds a lot of potential, especially for gigabit city applications, for civic engineering, for medical uh, telemedicine, and a lot of applications that may be, we might see emerge in the next uh, decade that really make a difference for what uh, what people have available in their life for remote interactivity. So anyway, I went through recently, I set up the development environment for HoloLens. I thought I'd make a quick, quick video about how to install the development environment for HoloLens and how to make a quick project for the HoloLens and show people how that's done. There's a couple of videos out there on YouTube that are great for this already. I'll link those in the show notes and I'm not trying to recreate those, but I think that they don't cover some of the gotchas in installing some of the tools and some of the process on how long that takes. So I wanted to give you some sort of heads up on what that actually looks like on a, de a desktop and run you through a little bit of an interesting project, I think is a way to start developing on the HoloLens itself. All right, so first let's cover what the HoloLens development paradigm is to kind of get you a correct conceptual model of what's going on. You're going to use uh, Unity, which is a 3D game engine framework uh, that is easily usable to develop generation, uh, generate content for the HoloLens. That's going to help you develop the content itself and send it out to Visual Studio. And you're going to use a HoloLens emulator. All of this needs to run on top of Windows 10 Pro, uh, and it has to be Pro because Pro supports Hyper-V, which is a virtualization platform. The HoloLens emulator runs only in a virtualized environment, so it requires the Hyper-V from Windows 10 Pro. I'm not sure if it runs on Windows, Windows 8 Hyper-V. It probably does, but I've only tried it out on Windows 10 Pro, So, uh, and the recommended uh, update for Windows 10 Pro is out there. So go ahead and use it. It's got, got a lot of great features, so plan on doing that. The thing to understand about the development here is you'll develop an app initially in Unity and you'll see shortly here Unity has a special version of it that's in beta right now that's available that includes HoloLens development. But for the most part, other than a few uh, base considerations that you have to change for, it's just Unity development. So if you've ever, ever done Unity development, it's a very similar paradigm to that. Um, so if you've done it before, you should see, get used to what you're seeing and it should be pretty obvious. Um, additionally, um, It'll have to export to a Visual Studio project when you're getting ready to build. You should understand those are, that's a decoupled process. Once you go through your Unity development and modification, you'll do a build of a Visual Studio project from Unity down to the file system. At that point, it's decoupled. You can close down Unity, and then you would open Visual Studio and import and open that um, SLN project. And you can use any version of U, uh, Visual Studio. I'm going to use Visual Studio Community, which is the free version. So all these tools are free and available online, and that's a really nice feature of all this. Additionally, uh, Visual Studio, you'll open it up and you'll set up some build properties from Visual Studios, and that will build in the HoloLens emulator. Something to sort of understand that as you go through this process, when you develop in Unity, the build engine in Unity itself is Mono, which is a early version of a sort of an open source uh, implementation of .NET, although .NET has been open source much more natively itself. Uh, that's what Unity builds uh, used to build and launch. And over in Visual Studio, when you build that that project for the HoloLens emulator, it's built direct built directly in the .NET framework. So if you get deep into into build considerations for the HoloLens, just be aware those are the different environments are sort of happening in there, and they're decoupled. Okay, let's get to the actual setup itself. So if you go ahead and if you've ever used, um, if you've ever used, they're pretty good. Uh, if you just Google for you here, but I'll link it in the show notes as well. That has three major tools that you're going to need to install on your base. To be updated, if you've already got Visual Studio installed, make sure you're at update two or maybe there'll be versions that come out after this uh, is posted as well as when you install that you need to make sure that tools 1.31 and windows 10 sdk are also enabled in your visual studio install um, 
the only way to do that is through the installer. So if you already have Visual Studio installed and you need to you need to enable those tools, what you do is you just download the installer for Visual Studio again. You'll launch it. And it doesn't reinstall it on your system. It only installs any differences you select in the setup. So under setup, the setup tree, choose custom setup, and you'll be able to see that there are uh, options for tools uh, and for the Windows 10 SDK. So make to, make sure those are selected, and then go through the normal Visual Studio install. If anyone hasn't install Visual Studio before and you've been using let's say Mono for your development environment which many people do in Unity and you're, this is the first time you're installing it just be prepared that can be a pretty lengthy install process like most IDEs and most build environments there's a lot of files to pull down so it can be quite large and it can take quite a bit quite a while As a matter of fact I think it took me two hours or something like that to install Visual Studio so just be aware of that and not a lot of that is network traffic by the way so a lot of it is uh, install on the system itself and you'll need a system restart as well. One of the other things you'll need is a HoloLens emulator. That's the next this next item. If you just click on that, it'll start a download, downloadable executable. Once you have Visual Studio installed, uh, you'll you'll select that HoloLens emulator, start it. It'll install it on your system. The thing to know is you will not launch that as a separate application. The emulator will only launch out of Visual Studio, where it's not a separate application. That um, Unity HoloLens itself is a um this once you install it it'll install to a separate folder if it doesn't just select a different folder name and you can have two side by side installs of unity on your system but it needs to be this hololens uh, version you'll need to both install the the basic unity development um, kit you also need to install the universal windows platform runtime that lets univer uh, unity build uh, uwp applications for you uh, for you all right, so making sure your operating system can handle uh, the Hyper-V that you need to install. That's another couple things you want to make sure that you're checking for. Um, so you need to make sure that um, virtualization is supported in your BIOS. And I can't show a screen of that in the broadcast, obviously. But however BIOS is, in, is uh, invoked when your system starts up, usually it's F2 or delete. Uh, or delete. Sometimes it's F12. That should bring up uh, some option there where it says virtu hardware virtualization is supported. So... That uh, varies from BIOS, but it might say hardware virtualization uh, supported or Intel virtualization. One of those should work for you. Or just Google your individual BIOS if you need to know. Um, for it's, uh, it's a hardware support uh, for uh, prevention of, of certain applications to run. So the way to do that is with a small um, native Windows uh, command line. I'll, uh, you can just type what you're seeing here into your command line. You need to run the command prompt as administrator, though. That's important to know. So when you just select, uh, when you want to bring up your command prompt from your Windows, the way to do that is command prompt. You just find it, and you right-click on it, and select Run as Administrator. Uh, things are running a little slow on my system. But you just select run as administrator and that's what you get so when you type this command in you hit um, hit return and it'll tell you true if it's enabled false if it is not so that is pretty simple to find out the other bit uh, for slat you want to find out um, core info is a tool from uh, technet that you can download it's a very small executable i downloaded it to my c drive so you just go ahead and you execute that from wherever you downloaded to, uh, from core info Dash V for verbose, and it gives you some out. The hypervisor is present, and then it tells you at the very bottom this supports uh, Intel, in, Intel enabled uh, SLAT. So as long as all that works, your CPU is able to run the development environment and the, the HoloLens emulator. Most of this stuff is actually for the HoloLens emulator. There's other things they tell you in the requirements for installing the tools that you should be aware of. Uh, core and a 64 bit um, bus system to be able to run this. Of course, you'll want um, uh, DirectX 11 or I've got uh, Windows. Uh, I think I got DirectX 12. Um, uh, you can just text. 
check through your settings or uh, DirectX dialog, uh, what your version of DirectX is. But we're not going to do that in this video for um, for this long. As I mentioned, Unity for HoloLens is separate from Unity itself. I've got both installed on my system. Unity for HoloLens. And that starts up in the background. You, it's just standard Unity. So most of the stuff you see will be pretty obvious uh, if you're if you're used to Unity already. Let's go ahead and create a new project, and I'll make sure I put it in my Visual Studio. Yeah, Visual Studio project. It doesn't matter where you put it. That's just where I put it. I'm going to call this New HoloLens Project and One Three D. And in Unity, that actually just changes some default settings, so you can switch back and forth. If you start one in the wrong, it's really not that that big of a deal to get corrected. So Unity will fire up and bring you into the standard Unity um, Unity service panel. The services change. This is a beta software, so it uh, sometimes it comes back weirdly to me. Um, it comes back with different stuff. So the first thing you do is when you want to start a Unity project itself is actually the first thing you want to do is save your scene. That's something that trip people up quite often. So I'm going to save the scene. I'm going to call it HoloLens. You'll see in a second. Um, often something if you've done Unity development before, one of the things that can trip up uh, newbies in Unity scene. So that's just something important to keep in mind with this software. All right, so the camera, the first thing you want to know, conceptually what's going on here is in normal Unity projects, the camera is intended to either float around above the scene if it's a 3D isometric project, or it's intended to be looking through the eyes of the uh, first person perspective. That doesn't really apply here because uh, you, you set it above the ground if you're a first person, that doesn't really apply. You want to put the camera, which will represent the sight of the person wearing the HoloLens, at the center of the project. So set the position to zero, zero, zero. You can go ahead and uh, HoloLens. Uh, it all the skybox background, so set it to a Good thing about HoloLens is HoloLens cannot render black on the HoloLens itself. Obviously, that makes sense. It can add it can add light to your eyes, but it can't subtract light from your eyes. So it can't render black. Black is transparent on the HoloLens. So sent this background. Uh, so I need here. Oh, uh, clipping mask. Uh, the HoloLens recommendation for clipping mask is to set that to 053. And what that does is is modify 3D object when it gets too close to the uh, to the user and what kind of clipping. Save the scene again. Control save and save scene. All right, so that's all you need to do to set up the camera. So let's get started by an object into um, into Unity itself um, and and show you what we can see. I, one thing I'd like to do um, is set up a. Um, so I'm bringing up something in another window. Um, a lot of people do is sort of a cube demo. That's easy to do, and there's a lot of videos out there. I thought I'd try to do a little bit of something extra for us today. So um, I'm going to try to import a Unity asset that's a globe and get that to uh, get that to display on the emulator for us. So let's go and instead of creating this standard cube, uh, let's go ahead and put in an asset from the asset store and unity if anyone's developed in unity before um, The asset store is a great resource. There's lots of assets available for development in, in unity Most of them seem to work in HoloLens for by most of the feedback Take a second to come up a lot of these are free so the unity asset store allows you to buy assets That's great for game developers, but everything you're seeing and I'm using here today is free So I'm gonna use a planet earth free model and I'm going to import that into my project. And what that does is pull off, uh, pulls off of the web. It pulls down all of these uh, packages. It can trip you up. It trips me off fairly often. And sometimes that import window, it lets you select individual assets in an import package to bring in or diselect them. Um, 
you know, sometimes pops up in the background for me. So I haven't seen the window pop up and it's not obvious to me that the application has done something. So occasionally that trips me up. So just be aware of that. Look for a pop up window in the background. Close your windows and look for it maybe lurking in the back. So just hit import. This is going to go ahead and assets so they're called assets in unity terminology so they include simple things like you'll see pngs are being brought in right there those are the textures that are mapped to materials and materials are put on top of 3d meshes to cover their skin and so forth that's all brought in at once and that went pretty quick that's great so if we look here we see materials models and prefabs so what i want to do is take one of the these prefabs these earth prefabs and put it in my scene i'm going to take earth medium i'm just going to drag it up here and it automatically gets into the scene everything turned blue so it may not be obvious right away but the model is so big that it's actually the camera and it it, it you can't see it unless you zoom out a little bit like i just did there bring down the size of this globe and i want to Move it out in front of the observer a little bit. If you get close, you can still see the cameras in the middle of the globe, which won't allow us to see the globe. So I'm going to set it out in front of the viewer. I'll set this to, let's say, five. And now we can see that we have the camera here and we have the globe in front of it. And just like a standard Unity project, we save the scene again there. Just like a standard Unity project, this is something you can play right from Unity itself. So if I hit play, it's going to compile and it's going to run right in front of me. So we've got a slowly spinning globe with a sort of a glue a glue more than a little bit of so let's do that now how you compile for hololens is pretty simple studio project the visual studio project depends on a bunch of config files and it comes out of the central.sln folder for the project settings and so forth so they're not the build a video project from project to be able to open up in, in Visual Studio. So the way you do you build is you like you do normal builds in in uh, you go over to build settings. Make sure first sometimes this uh, scenes in Open scenes, we can see the HoloLens scene is now part of this. We want to go down and the SDK we want to use is Universal 10 for a Universal Windows 10 application. I said earlier, I think it'll probably run on a, on a Hyper-V on an earlier version of Windows and build. I just haven't personally tested it and that's what makes me think it since it's enabled as an option. Just uh, Universal Windows Platform build type, leave ExactMill in there. Uh, details of that are not important. Uh, local machine type, leave it on local machine. These two settings for Unity C Sharp projects, development builds, you can check those. They won't affect you. Uh, they're not needed for what we're doing. What that is for is that it, it builds out some debug information for Visual Studio. So you don't you don't really need that, um, but uh, so that's fine. So we've got everything set here and we just hit build. We need to build it to someplace on our file system. And the standard uh, way of doing it in Unity is, uh, is to create a builds folder. And Unity, uh, often, since Unity can build for a number of general practices, they create a builds folder and then create a separate subfolder under that for each type of platform you build to. Now, I'll still do that here. Um, but I don't think it actually matters because I think you can only build it for Windows Platform. So I'll create a uh, Universal Windows Platform build folder. I'll select this folder to build in. And in a moment, it'll tell you. So it's grabbing NuGet packages. It's building a Visual Studio project from the file system the way it needs to be for Visual Studio. It's compiling. So it's going through a normal build process. And once this gets done, we'll be able to open it up in Visual Studio. And at that point, Unity is not involved anymore. So it's pretty straightforward. We can actually, and I'll show you here, we'll close Unity and deal with this only in the HoloLens emulator and in Visual Studio itself. Uh, so it's a pretty, it can be a fairly slow process. Remember, this is a slightly larger than the standard cube um, display, but 
it's really not that big of a project. So as you can see, these can take a little bit of time to, to, to build every time you do it. So keep that in mind. Most of the time, you really only need to build it out when you want to test it on the HoloLens emulator. And eventually, you need to test it on the HoloLens itself, obviously. But you can remember, you can still run it from within Unity. So it's not something you really need to do uh, very often. All right, great. So that build is done. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. Uh, that's usually not a good sign. Yeah, but hopefully this worked for me. So let's bring up Visual Studio. My poor system's chugging. Uh, not just because of Unity itself, but I'm and broadcasting out to YouTube at the same time. So it may run better for you on your system if you have something similar. So, all right, let's uh, open a project. If I go down to uh, my documents and Visual Studio, projects, Holland's project, that's a project I created. So this is the root of the Unity pro uh, project that I created. I need to go to builds and under here, we can see the SLN file that's standard for Visual Studio projects. And I need to hit open, select that and hit open. All right, so we've got our Visual Studio project open. You can see it might tell you it has a failure finding a few um, files down at the bottom. I've seen some of those errors. This is all beta software, so I've not had a problem with it uh, doing something wiggy for me. We can close this version of it. Um, but I, you might see one or two files that don't show up. Um, that's not That shouldn't be a problem for you. So to build this project and launch it in the emulator, emulator you want to select up here in the processor type. You want to get x86. And over here for the build type, you want to send it out to a HoloLens emulator. And that's all you need to do to build this project. Once that, I'll click this, and it'll begin pulling down some more NuGet pro, uh, packages. It'll build it'll build the necessary compiled uh, DLLs and files. And it'll get it ready to run and launch, and it'll launch the Win Windows emulator when it gets ready to go. It's not obvious sometimes that this is doing something that the build just started. And I can see down here uh, it's doing there's some kind of process running, but it's not always very apparent to me. And this is the HoloLens emulator that pops up. This is this screen space is uh, supposed to emulate the HoloLens itself, which is this wraparound goggle if you haven't tried it. Uh, in the center of it, though, it has this projection area, which is rectangular just like this. And uh, this is what that will emulate. It won't do the whole field of view. And obviously, it won't do whatever room that it's in. Um, but no idea what 3D objects will be presented on the um, on the Hololens itself. It's telling you the OS has started. I said a little earlier. What's going on here is this is a whole virtual environment, so that's why this takes a little while to launch. It's it's running in Hyper-V on your on your system, and it's running that virtual environment, so it's building a whole new system. And it takes a few uh, it takes a few minutes to start up, or at least a few seconds. And you can, um, I'll orient you to a little bit to what you're seeing on the side. You use several different types of input, emulate uh, human input. It also has options for keyboard input, zoom in and things like that. The human input for a HoloLens is your finger. So it keeps track of your, it keeps track of your finger in front of you. This, this attempts to emulate that with the mouse cursor, but really the, there's no pointer in HoloLens. It's your center field of vision. So that's what you'll, whatever you're looking at is what you're able to select in HoloLens. Uh, you might be able to reach out with your finger and select things as well. So right now this is, it's loading the application itself. It's made with Unity. And boom, we've got the globe that I just put up. If this was an actual HoloLens, what you'd be able to do is see the room behind you. You'd be able to interact with it by tapping it. The left mouse button lets you drag things around a little bit to orient to perspective of the camera, but it is the right mouse button which lets you, um, which lets you actually control it. So it's starting again, made with Unity. And you'll get some error messages down there, which is just fine. Um, 
you can see this small icon in the middle. That's actually the selector. And that's, what this emulates is the uh, the viewer, that would be their center point of, of uh, contact. So I, if you want to do this close button, you need to not do it with your mouse. You need to do this with the center point with the center um, uh, with the center view icon which is supposed to emulate the, the user's view and right click is what actually selects in this not left click was that's a little counterintuitive drag tool okay you can see what I did just there this listens to audio which emulates what hollow one of these tools I need to just speak the uh, uh, speak the zoom tool adjust and let you adjust the, the done. So let me drag it, move it, and click it, then I'm done. Okay, well, I don't need to get into more of this, but this is what the user will see. So this is our first compile quickly. Uh, I'm pretty happy with how easy it is to get up and running. I've, I've been reading this material this week, so I'm it and I was able to cube pretty quickly and I decided today just before I recorded the video that I give a shot importing this globe as a standard universe unity asset and my experience with it was really great stick about the the hololens I think it's uh, really has a great set of potential like any new product it's not a all sorts of areas civic engineering medicine and all sorts of things so we're very excited about it get to do this but we will have we can try uh, we can get some people to